welcome back to educator.com. Today's lesson is on mollusks. Our objectives for today would be, number one, how are mollusks classified? Number two, how does a shell help mollusks to survive? And number three, how do mollusks obtain food and oxygen? Let's start by asking the question, what are mollusks? Mollusks are invertebrates. They're actually soft-bodied invertebrates. Invertebrates, again, mean that they have no backbone. Mollusks uh, may have soft bodies, but they can also have a hard outer shell which protects that soft body from any type of predator or damage. Uh, mollusks all belong to the phylum mollusca, and that word mollusca just means soft. Mollusks are the, uh, the phylum mollusca is actually the second largest phylum of all animals. So there's quite a bit of diversity in this phylum. Most mollusks are found in the ocean, but some can also be found on land. The mollusks are actually the first animals to have developed what we call gills. Gills are just a structure that help the animal to uh, breathe and actually take in that oxygen and breathe out that carbon dioxide, which is called gas exchange. So it's an adaptation that animals use in order to help them to get that oxygen in and that carbon dioxide out. But also, some mollusks can use those gills in order to capture their prey, which is their food source. All mollusks exhibit a bilateral symmetry, which just means that the if you were to cut that mollusk in half on right and left halves, those right and left halves would be what we call mirror images of each other. So the two sides would be considered mirror images, similar to your hands, your right and left hand. If you were to have them folded in and open them up, they would be mirror images of each other. Here are some pictures of mollusks. And here is also an example of what that bilateral symmetry would look like in a clam. A clam has two parts of its shell, and it's kind of like a hinged shell. So if you open up that hinge, you would see that the right and left sides are identical. Here is another example, a picture of a mollusk, and it shows you where the gills would be located. Uh, they would be located here inside of this particular mollusk. And again, those gills are used for gas exchange. Some examples of mollusks that you may have heard about would be things like snails, slugs, limpets, clams, octopi, which is just the plural for octopus, mussels, and oysters. A lot of the seafood that we use uh, to eat as a food source would be categorized in this uh, group, mollusks. So let's talk about some distinguishing features that mollusks have to help you identify whether or not this animal that you may have seen on the beach is actually a mollusk. Well, mollusks have what we call a muscular foot. Now the foot, just like our feet, uh, have a special function there used for locomotion or movement. Um, but it doesn't necessarily look like the foot that you have. It can take on many forms, many shapes, many sizes. So it is used for movement or for grasping. Um, also, mollusks have what we call a mantle. A mantle is like a thin layer of cells. And this cell layer covers the body or the internal organs inside of that mollusk. So it's like a protective outer covering. The mantle also is able to secrete a special type of chemical that helps to form the outer shell of mollusks that have that particular uh, that have that particular structure. And last of all, again, we talked about the gills. The gills are the uh, structure or adaptation found between the mantle and the body, and they're used for gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide gases so that that mollusk can breathe. So uh, 
Gills can be used for gas exchange and also for capturing food. Here is a picture of a mollusk and this would be considered, this area here would be considered its foot. And this is what helps this mollusk to move. This would be the hard outer shell. And that's the protective covering. And inside of that shell would be the soft body that the shell protects. Uh, here is a picture of different types of mollusks. We have the snail, the clam, and then we also have the squid. Now, even though these different organisms look very different on the outside, they do have those same similarities. They have the uh, foot structure in the pink here, and they have the uh, shell structure. Uh, the actual shell inside is inside of the squid. The clam, you can see it on the outside, and the snail, you can also see it on the outside. Um, and they have other organisms that are very similar in structure.